my name is Michaela, um, and I just wanted to start by thanking ICI and the Star Foundation for um, this amazing opportunity to really um, is transformative for me in a lot of ways. Um, so today I'll share my research with you from China and Cambodia. Um, initially, I set out to study the relationship between garment factory workers and the clothing that they themselves wear. Um, but during my first interview, I realized that there was a much more urgent need, and that's just to document the life stories of the men and women who work um, in the global industry and who rely on mass manufacturing um, for their livelihood. So as, out of the 15 conversations that I had with um, workers from three different factories, two in China and two in, uh, one in Cambodia, um, there were two main themes that emerged um, through our conversations. One is the craving for independence through business using skills garnered from the industry, um, so sewing skills, or um, in the case in C Cambodia, it was um, a shoe factory. So, uh, and the second was self-sacrifice for the sake of their children or other members of their family. Um, and so today I wanted to share four of these stories with you quickly. Um, so uh, this is Ding. He works incredibly hard to provide for his daughter, who is a university student studying in the United States. And he works as an ironman, so he irons all of the clothes um, after they're done being sewn and before they leave the factory to go to the store. Um, he works seven days a week, uh, pressing garments at his usual factory, and if he can't get overtime there, then he goes to another factory in the area to find um, more employment. And he thinks it's most important to him that his daughter's able to complete her education so that she can have a successful life. Um, this is Leng in the striped dress. Uh, she's the mother and her daughter, Zheng, is in the gray. And um, she brings her daughter to work if, uh, at the garment factory with her when she has school vacation because she wants her daughter to um, experience factory life. She wants her to experience the work, and she hopes that it will encourage her to stay in school longer and complete her education so that she can actually um, have the opportunity to maybe live out her mother's dream. Um, her mom wants to become, wanted to become a fashion designer, and she hopes that her daughter will have the opportunity to do that um, if she wants. And uh, this young woman um, is maybe 18. Uh, her name is Unit, and she's incredibly shy, um, really sweet. But she likes to hang out with her friends during her days off, and she lives at home. She travels back and forth from the garment factory every day into the um, uh, back into the countryside. And she actually liked to make clothes when she was younger. Uh, for dolls and um, for her friends and for herself. And she thought that she wanted to be a seamstress, but um, there are too many obstacles for her. She doesn't understand how she can make that happen for herself. Um, so uh, the last story is um, Chana, and she's a mother of four. Um, she also cares for her sick elder sister. Um, and she's constantly worried about money and um, is unable to send her children to school every day because she doesn't have enough money to do that. Um, and she talked really freely in the interview about her circumstances in life and her philosophy on bringing up children and the changing culture um, in Cambodia. Uh, so these four stories, um, I think, exemplify the types of conversations that I had. And they illustrate the dependency and the struggle that workers have um, who are part of mass manufacturing and, um, and the struggles that they have every day that they live with. Uh, most of the research produced, it's a, or most of all, the research um, is a set of stories that show various trajectories and capture the aspirations behind a global industry. Um, the stories humanize the products that we welcome into our lives so easily. Um, 
And they show these products uh, not just as objects, but as moments in someone else's life. So um, to make this information more available um, to the public outside of the university, I created a website um, with all 15 of the interviews. You can go and explore um, the conversation through video and photography and also read a full transcript of the interview. And for those of you who know Chinese, you can read it in Chinese too, um, in Mandarin. <laughs> and um, so I, I would really love to continue this research. It was so inspiring for me to, uh, to start the work. And uh, I'd love to go to other countries across the world and um, gather stories from the industry in that country. So that's, thank you.